Lads, so Wales are two games away from the 2022 World Cup. What would it mean to Wales as a nation to reach that, do you think? Yeah, it'd mean everything. Um, obviously, it's been a very long time since Wales reached the World Cup. Um, so, obviously, yeah, the lads, we've always been waiting for this moment that these games coming up, but obviously with the stuff happening around the world, then we, we, we're only able to play one game, and that's against Austria, so all the focus is now on that game um, and then we've got to see where that takes us but yeah like I said the main focus is that game uh, to win that game and then the focus will be on either Scotland or Ukraine and yeah you alluded to it there um, Nico with that the Scotland Ukraine game being postponed it is literally just full focus on what's in front of you right now I guess yeah 100% um, obviously as teams you always do uh, take game by game um, but the two games that we were main focused on was the Austria and to hopefully win that than to play Ukraine or Scotland. Um, but now, um, obviously, the Ukraine and Scotland game has been has been on a hold. So um, all we could do now is just focus on the Austria game and and winning that. So um, yeah, we're obviously all looking looking forward to uh, regrouping, getting together again, um, getting these training training out the way and and playing this game and like I said to to win that game and and see where it takes us and Austria uh, they're a good team I think they showed that in the Euros last year but um you've got the home tie being in front of the the, the Welsh crowd um got to be confident going into it haven't you yeah I think the home the home advantage is huge I think our home record over the last few years has been very good so we know with the fans behind us, the the atmosphere they create, it really gives us a lift when, when we're on the pitch. So we have to take full advantage of that. But like you said, Austria showed what a great team they are last year at the Euros. Um, and some of the players they've got through their, te- through their team, players that play Champions League for top European t- uh, sides. So yeah, it's going to be a very, very tough game. But like Nico said, we've only got the one game next month now. So... Yeah, we have to con- concentrate on winning that one. And then whenever the second game is rescheduled for, um, that's when we'll focus on that one. I feel like when I was growing up, there felt like a bit of a disconnect between the fans and the national side. But over the years, that seems to have changed. I suppose first when Gary Speed took over and then the Chris Coleman years, uh, there seems to be a real bond between the team and the, the Welsh fans now. Is, is that something you guys can feel? Um, yeah, I think especially over the last, I'd say, 10, 12 years or so, it's been, I think the national teams really come up again, because I think for the few years before, before that, like like you said, there maybe was a bit of a, yeah, a bit of a distance there, but yeah, especially the last 10, 12 years since Gary Speed took over, um, he's really brought the national team on, and then Chris, Chris Coleman took over and got us to our first major tournament in, I think it was 50 odd years, so, and then luckily we were able to, uh, yeah, to, to repeat that with the Euros last year, so, I feel the national team's in a really good position at the minute and yeah, we're both just thankful to be part of that. I think Wales captured everyone's hearts at 2016, the Euros. Um, what was it like as, as two young teenagers watching that at home? Yeah, I think any any professional footballer, uh, the dream is to play in in big tournaments like the Euros and we was luckily, um, luckily enough to be a part of it and, and to play in it. Um, Unfortunately, that we went out quite a harsh way. Um, I think obviously we played a lot of away games and a lot of travelling, so I think that played a big part. But um, no, it's always been a dream to play in in major tournaments, and and the Euros was a great eye opener and experience for especially us young lads because we've got a young team. Um, and yeah, I think when when we did play in that, it did give us the motivation to go and do as best as we can because watching the lads from the Euros 2016 it was unbelievable and when you're watching that at home and as little kids um, you always dreamt of, of playing in that um, and, and yeah, yeah like I said that was a great eye opener and, and if we qualify for the World Cup we'll, we'll be another massive achievement and, and a dream come true because um, as, as young players you always want to play in the big games and the big stages and the World Cup you can't get any bigger than that so that, that would be a nice little dream come true. How do you guys look back on last summer's Euros? Because obviously the first, first goal was to get into the knockouts, you do that, but then you're coming up against a, a Denmark side who were highly motivated throughout the whole tournament. Yeah, I think the 2016 one was, was fantastic because the fans obviously hadn't, a lot of them hadn't been to a major tournament, tournament before because it had been so long and 
for them to go there and support the team in every game was great. I think last year with obviously the way the world was with coronavirus and stuff, the travel was restricted. So yeah, having our games in ba Baku, which was a night nightmare to get to, and then to have one of them in Rome, where I think Italy went, letting the UK people in. So yeah, it was difficult for us because we didn't have the backing which we knew we would have had if the if the world was was normal, if if you like. So um, yeah, that was difficult, but I thought we done well to get through the group. It wasn't an easy group. I think the second game, especially against Turkey, we showed our quality and what a really good team we are. Um, and then done what we needed to do against Italy in the final game. And yeah, like you said, the the knockout game where we did eventually go out was obviously dis 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 disappointing. Um, a very good Dan Denmark team, and on the and on the day they deserved to go through. But yeah, we was obviously disappointed with that. But I think like like Nico said, we got a fairly young young team, and the experience of that tournament I think will stand stand us in good stead moving forward. And yeah, hope hopefully start starting with the qualifying game next week. And Nico, you've started a good number of games for, for Wales recently, but I suppose now that you're playing week in, week out, you're playing well for Fulham, I suppose you're hoping you can really nail down that, that regular slot with the national side. Yeah, 100%. Um, I think as a young player, it's important to get the games in. Um, sometimes for Wales, it might have killed me not playing playing games and coming straight into Wales and playing games where I'm not, I haven't got much fitness, much rhythm, uh, so, it, so it was difficult, but... Like you said, now I'm playing regular. Um, I've got match fitness, rhythm, um, and and hopefully that will lead me straight into the into the games for for Wales. And Harry, am I right in saying you're you're still Wales's youngest ever player? Is that right? So you're 16. You come on against Belgium, and they've got Eden Hazard playing, Moussa Dembélé, Kevin De Bruyne, Lukaku. That must have been some surreal experience. Yeah, it was. Obviously, I can't really remember too much of it because I think it's a mixture of yeah, being young, excited, nervous, but. Yeah, I remember the game. I think they'd already qualified for the World Cup, so there's a bit of a party atmosphere. Um, and they were one 0 up. I think there was five, ten, ten minutes to go. And I remember Coleman turning around and tell, telling me to get ready. And as a 16 year old, it was yeah, like I said, a mixture of nerves, excitement. And yeah, when I got on, I just wanted to make sure I got a touch of the ball first and foremost. And yeah, if I could do do something with it, great. And I think it, we were one 0 down when I come on and we drew one one. So I uh, take a little bit of credit credit for that. And how obviously Cookie's a bit of a legend around these parts. How did you find working with him? Yeah, I loved working with him. Not only obviously did he give me my debut, but I think his way of management. I think all the boys loved um, how he, how he was with the players. I think he'd not long, I say not long, retired when he had the Welsh Welsh job. So we felt that um, yeah, he'd been there and done it. He understood players, and yeah, I can't speak high, highly enough of him and what he did for Welsh football. Um, not just getting us to our first major, major tournament in years, but um, I think the way he got the team playing and the fans believing, um, yeah, he's, he's, he's a leg legend in Welsh football. And was it playing with Wales where you two sort of became close? Because I'm guessing at Liverpool, with a few years between you, you might not have been playing in the same youth teams? Yeah, I think we're from a similar area, so obviously we knew of, of each other, but with that age age gap, we didn't really play, I don't think at all, to, to, to get together at Liverpool. So. Yeah, it was when he got his first call up for Wales. Um, I think I dropped him a me message, and yeah, and then when he came into camp, I done my best to try and wel welcome him in, and yeah, I think he fitted in well, and I think everyone's seen straight straight away what a good good player he was, and yeah, I think off the pitch he's fitted in well too. Is it Wrexham where you guys? Are I'm Wrexham. You're more. I'm calling, yeah. So I'm a little bit further further, further out, okay. but yeah, we're still quite close. But I guess everyone from those areas must just be absolutely buzzing to see you guys doing as well as you are. Yeah, I think everyone around that area knows each other and especially when you're a footballer, everyone's going to know you. Um, I remember knowing all the, the Wrexham players growing up and when I used to see one in town, I used to go over and ask for pictures and stuff. So especially playing for big teams and playing for Wales, um, you're going to know of each other and people are going to know you. So yeah, it's, it's a great feeling. And it's not just you guys, there's some big qualifiers for the other boys as well in this period. I think Niskins has got a similar double header um, to you guys like a playoff. Um, Tim and Jedi have got important games in their group and it's in their hands to qualify. Do you guys do you guys chat about it? Do you sort of root for each other seeing as you're not in direct competition at the moment anyway? Yeah, obviously we'll be rooting for the boys. You want everyone in your your team your team to do to do well. I think Jedi was saying I think the US are in a very good good position to qual qualify so they'll be hoping they do that. Um, and then Niskins the same so yeah, obviously our main main focus is making sure we qualify for Wales. But yeah, if your teammates at Fulham can uh, can get to the World Cup as well, we'll be just as happy for them. Nice, well, all rooting for you, boys.